Thank you. Um, it's an extraordinary honor uh, to receive the Harvey Prize. I want to say thank you to Technion, thank you to Israel. Um, when you get personal prizes, it's at least an outward appearance about celebrations of individuals and what they've accomplished. But I must say my own feeling here today is a feeling of just being extraordinarily lucky, having had many very lucky accidents and many very wonderful people who have shared things and been generous to me. I have a very, very unlikely career path, as you've referred to already. Um, I loved mathematics as a high school student. I loved mathematics as a college student. I loved mathematics as a graduate student uh, at, at Oxford. But I somehow, as, you, as you've referred to, knew deep down that I didn't want to be a pure mathematician as a career because it was a solitary career. And I knew somehow that I wanted something with shared purpose, something that involved Large, something larger than myself, to be part of a community. And a lot of my life was casting about to figure out how to be part of such a community and how to partake in shared purpose. Um, as you said, I taught at a business school for a while, thinking that I wanted to do something more worldly, and that would be a way to do it. But it, it didn't provide that sense of shared purpose. What did was the somewhat accidental uh, path that led to a laboratory. Yes, my brother suggested I should learn about neurobiology, but what really caught me was when I began to hang out in a lab and I realized what a wonderful community it was. It was a sense of people working together towards some larger goal, understanding something. And I fell in love within the first couple of months with that sense of, of larger shared purpose and community. I then had many accidents. I didn't actually have any plan to go work on the human genome. I, there wasn't a human genome project, but uh, one day after a seminar, I was lucky enough to bump into a, a brilliant person, David Botstein, who was beginning to work on mapping simple human Mendelian diseases, and we began talking. And um, actually, he's from the Bronx, I'm from Brooklyn. We began arguing with each other, that being the form of communication in New York, and I think also probably in Israel. Um, and you know, I just, I just realized this was a wonderful problem and began to work with David on it. And I had no inkling, because there was no human genome project then, of, of what was yet to come. But the idea of a human genome project was in the air, and people were talking about it that year and the next year. And I just feel extraordinarily lucky to have been part of what was perhaps the largest shared purpose we've had in biology, to all work together and be part of a community of thousands of people to get something done that would, would be there for everyone. I've had the great good fortune since then to be part of many other shared efforts, cancer genome projects and haplotype map projects to study inherited the disease. And uh, there's just nothing more satisfying. There's nothing that one can do alone that is more satisfying than feeling that you're part of something much larger than yourself. So when the Human Genome Project was finishing up, um, I very much just wanted to keep that feeling of being able to continue to work together. And the only way to do it was somehow to convince Harvard and MIT that they had to work together, and all the hospitals. And as you can imagine, this was a simple thing to do. Uh, to you know, two or three years of discussions to figure out how one these institutions could work together. But for the past nine years, we've had an extraordinary shared community across a whole city of many institutions with the barriers broken down. And so when I met yesterday with President Peretz Levy and found out that the Broad had been something of an inspiration for the Technion uh, Cornell collaboration, I just could not have been prouder because sharing amongst ourselves these models for communities is really such an important thing. And that, I, I've got to say, was the most meaningful thing I've heard in a very long time to think that, that, you know, that would be a seed for this and then the Technion Cornell will be a seed for other things. And that is what human progress is about, is, is creating those models and those seeds. And so, um, it was very special to hear and, and know about that. And then, of course, I should say, um, 
there's no place in the world that is more about shared purpose and community than Israel. Um, you know, this is a country about shared purpose and, and an extraordinarily, extraordinarily unlikely journey. Um, I'm struck to find that um, in surveys, Israel consistently comes out as the happiest country in the world. That is, on scales of happiness, Israelis rank higher than people in any other country. And for my own part, I think that is about, yes, many, many pressures, many complexities of, of Israel's position in the world, but I think that sense of shared purpose is in fact what makes Israel the happiest country in the world. My own personal ties to Israel have been very important. Some are personal, some are scientific. Uh, my mother came and made Aliyah when she retired and lived here in Israel for many years, and uh, that was a wonderful thing. And um, scientifically, I have had so many connections with Israel of scientific collaborators. Uh, the Broad Institute has Hebrew as one of its official languages, in effect. Uh, certainly on the sixth floor, conversations are about as likely to be in English or as in Hebrew, uh, in particular because we have so many Israelis on, on my floor of the Broad Institute. And it's, it's really a wonderful thing to be traveling more and more often to Israel with, with these connections. Um, and I'm excited that we now have a joint program between Broad and Israel. Uh, that, that has started in the past year. Uh, it's, it's between Broad and uh, the ISF connecting to all of the institutions in Israel with, with funding coming from the Broad for labs in Israel working with the Broad and postdocs coming over to the Broad, including money for them to come back and start their labs here so that, so that they don't leave in the long run. And so uh, it, it has just been really great to have deeper and deeper ties with Israel. And I must say on this visit and on my last visit, I have been so struck by the potential of Israel in this new genomic era. Israel has so many great things going for it with, with respect to aspects of its medical systems. Medical records here are better organized than in the United States. That's not that hard, it turns out, but it's very impressive. And Israel has such an amazing population. Having come from so many corners of the world and being gathered into Israel, it means that there are so many things that can be learned here from these many groups, and Israel's beginning to do it. And I see so many possibilities in the year ahead, years ahead for what Israel can do. So, and I hope very much that, that we and our colleagues in Boston can help in, in many ways and be colleagues and collaborators and part of a larger community. So, I say again, prizes, well, you know, they go to individuals because they have to go to individuals, I suppose. There's not a great other way to do it. But uh, they remind one of the fact that it's not individuals that accomplish things. It is, it, is, it is collections of people, it is communities. And I feel so lucky to have been part of, of such communities in my life and to continue to be part of such communities, including the great community here in Israel. So, toda raba, and uh, thank you all. Thank you very much, Mr.